Thank you for staying with us still on the Naira scarcity issue. As the lingering scarcity of both old and new notes continue to cripple economic activities nationwide, inflicting enormous pains on businesses, individuals, and households, entrepreneurs are agonizing in pains arising from poor sales due to the shortage of cash for individuals to make purchases and meet their needs, bringing their purchasing power next to zero. As this challenge continues to bite harder, Industry players operating in the small and medium enterprises ecosystem of the Nigerian economy say the scarcity of the notes has negatively impacted their operations as they are unable to get raw materials for their production and also being able to pay their staff, especially the casual workers. Emmanuel Akpeme is a lawyer and manager at PricewaterhouseCoopers. He joins me live in the studio to look at the economic implications of all of this. Of course, some legal angle to it. He's a lawyer. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. It's good to see you. Thank you so much, Tolu. It's always a pleasure uh, having these conversations with you. Thank you. Uh, from the legal angle, yes, what it really is the implication of a bank failing to pay its customers when the customer has money or, well, you know, in his or her account in that bank? Okay, thank you so much, right, uh, Tolu. So this is uh, really a burning issue because... If you see across um, Nigeria, yes. um, the queues at ATMs, the queues at the banking halls, they are really, really increasing. And so, yes, the relationship between the customer and its bank, or his or her bank, is really um, a, a dicey one because they can be multifaceted. Um, if we want to look at it from this angle of a fiduciary relationship, right? Um, if you're looking at it from a fiduciary relationship, the customer has entrusted onto the bank his or her uh, money for safekeeping with the um, expectation that whenever he or she or needs. the company needs it, the bank will pay um, and the customer that particular amount. So if for any reason the customer demands or makes request for the money and the bank does not oblige the customer, it amounts to a breach of that fiduciary duty. Now, if we also look at it on the other hand, because um, we have seen cases where the courts have come up to say that, in fact, it is as uh, high as a debtor-creditor relationship. That is, the bank is the debtor while the customer is the creditor. And whenever the creditor, being the cost and the customer is the creditor, right? Whenever the customer demands for that repayment, yes. the bank is supposed to pay. Failure to do so, will mean that the customer will have um, access to compensation. Yes, the courts have held so. And even recently, um, in a particular case, the Court of Appeal said that if a customer goes to an ATM and tries to withdraw money for cash from the ATM, and the ATM doesn't dispense cash, that the, the bank has an explanation to make. And when it is not tenable, the bank will pay the customer compensation. So we look at it from these two ways, the um, fiduciary duty and the debtor-creditor duty. However, I've seen that in, uh, in most, most times when we are opening your account, most of us don't look at it. There are some general terms yeah, that, that we, do not, uh, we do not just pay attention yeah. to. Yeah. And in, on those, in, if you look at some of them, the bank ha will say some things like, um, if there are happenings beyond the bank's control, you know, if there are happenings beyond the bank's control, the bank can decide to say, okay, we, uh, we may not be able to meet our obligation. But again, this is something that should be tested. The truth is most of us don't really go to test these things in court. Yeah, but we don't. We don't, because... We don't. We can't I remember one of my yeah. boss, he would tell you, to do the courts are always opened. Go to the court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but let's shed more light on the Supreme Court's ruling restraining the federal government from enforcing the deadline on the old Naira notes. Thank you very much, Dolu. This is the, 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 the burning news yes, all so around that's Nigeria. Yes, <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> so, yes, the, um, the, the matter was between three states governments, right? Yes. And the Attorney General Federation. Now, what the Supreme Court ordered is what we call uh, a, an interim order. An interim order is akin to say, hold, hold on. on till we really look and um, decide on the su subject matter okay. before us. Because if the um, courts doesn't give this hold on order, by the time they are, they are coming to court on the 15th, the 10th of February deadline would have passed. And so why are they then in court? 
So the the Supreme Court is just saying parties should just hold oh, on no. whilst we determine the matter. Uh, right? Law maintains status quo, right? Yes, you maintain status quo. As in, do not do anything. Do not restrain people from um, using okay, the old using Naira the... notes, right? Mm -hmm. As in, do not enforce the tenth February the deadline. Now, but and for for me personally, I would say that an order of courts, whether it is Supreme Court, whether it is Court of Appeal or the lower court, they are supposed to be obeyed. Even if you do not agree with the order of court, it is incumbent on all parties to obey them. The only issue there now is the fact that one of the um, key person or key entity, the Central Bank of Nigeria, is not a party in this particular suit. I'm aware that the suit is still on, it's still sub -judies, and so I will not want to speak so much on it, but some things that we'll be expecting from the Supreme Court will be to look into determining the issue of jurisdiction. Because if you look at the particular section that is being interpreted as before the Supreme Court, that is section 20, subsection 3 of the Central Bank uh, of Nigeria Act, CBN Act, you understand that the these persons were mentioned, the central bank was mentioned, the president was mentioned. So if you are contesting that particular section of the uh, CBN Act, it is important that all parties are brought to the suit. So that is one area that the Supreme Court should look at when determining the issue before it. So do you think this will have any impact on the current challenges we face? Because I'll say we face, because we all face this at this time, mm -hmm. uh, we face at the moment. Do you think this will have any impact? Definitely. So before the Supreme Court interim order, yeah. by tomorrow, the old Naira note ceases to be a legal, legal tender. tender. Yes. yes, the Central Bank uh, mentioned that you can return the old Naira notes and for it to be swapped, right? But by um, after 10th of February, that's old, those old Naira notes cease to be legal tender. However, with this particular um, uh, order, what it means is that even beyond 10th of February 2023, these um, old Naira notes can still be used to make purchases. Can still be used to make purchases. But I have a, 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 little, a, a little reservation there. The issue is not just about the, the, the order. The issue is to the common man. Do you think with what is going on, those selling us out there will be ready to still accept the old Naira notes, right? Mm. So even though the... The mentality the, the, the and order, mindset of you, the you, psyche of uh, all correct, Nigerians at the moment. Correct. So uh, looking at it, it when, after tomorrow, if you go to meet somebody, the uh, hawker, the uh, small or medium scale... Um, he, he might not be interested they, in they the court order. They, they, just want, they just want the new Naira note, right? And so the, to the common man, that may not really have uh, so much of a um, lot of work needs effects. to be done, yes, yeah, sensitizing and educating. What are the learnings that you say from the, the past week looking at all of these challenges for you? Uh, is there any takeaway? A whole lot of takeaways. So, um, to do, um, we have um, always stressed this, and that is the issue of the fact that a, a, a policy or a strategy, no matter how beautiful it is, no matter how great it is, yeah. when the implementation, the execution yes. is not e efficient, yeah. then it will always result to this kind of hardship, yes. right? It is important that um, when things like this are to be done, um, proper planning is put in place, right? See, um, we, we cannot just go cash cashless all of a sudden, just uh, overnight, right? It is important that um, the proper infrastructure, the proper technology, because we see that even during this period, the technologies we are failing, the e-channels we are failing, in, uh, and all that. So it is important that when things, policies like this are to be done, we ensure that everything is put in, in, in perspective. Uh, if people mentioned India, that India, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, there was a redesign and, and all that. But the people fail to understand that that period, there was pain. In fact, it's on record that about 1.5 million persons lost their jobs, right, during that time. It is even on ground that um, so many persons uh, went into poverty at that point when India was carrying out that. Yes, the, it, it, there was a, a, a digital revolution during that period, but there was really hardship. So that some commentators say that this uh, could have been achieved in India without 
those hardships that the people suffered. And that is what we are seeing here in Nigeria again. It is important that we put things in perspective. Another thing I want to mention is, look at the United Kingdom. If you are aware, there is a form of redesign that is going on currently yes, yes, with yes. the death of the Queen, right? And you see, as of December, UK unveiled the new uh, pounds that will have the, 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 the portrait of the king and mentioned that it will go into circulation by mid-2024. You see, it was unveiled in 2022 and saying it will go... But what do we have here? We have something that was unveiled in November and... and um, they made the text it, back once it, it pushed. We should get it out by 31st of, it, it, uh, January. It, it, so it, it, I it, think it, the learning curve will be to really do proper planning and execution whenever we have some of these policies. Policy is good, but it is the implementation that has a lot of um, drawbacks. Brilliant stuff. What, we were together on the 2nd of January. Uh, we, we spoke so much on the finance bill, and it's more than 30 days now, and uh, President Buhari is yet to put pen to paper uh, or to send it back to, to the National Assembly, as we expect. Uh, what are the implications of this, and what does it mean for us? Thank you so much, Jolo. Yes, I remember I, I was the one that opened the business yes. in Nigeria <laughs> oh, <laughs> sometime yes. this year, right? Yes. So, yes. Um, the, what will happen now is Section 58 of the Constitution. Mm. Section 58 of the Constitution uh, makes, uh, if you look at subsection 4, right, makes provision for when a bill is passed to, um, is passed by the National Assembly and sent to the President. Now, the President has three options. Number one is to give his assent. Yeah. Number two, is to send it back to the National Assembly to say, I do not agree with this, I do not agree with that. And National Assembly, if they are okay with it, they can then make those amendments and then send it to the President again. Or the President can withhold his assent. That's what we call the President veto. Now, if the President withholds his assent, after 30 days, because from the look of things, the President has not communicated uh, publicly we don't know what is happening in the background, but from what we are seeing in the public uh, domain, the president has not communicated whether he is assenting to it or whether he has some points in the bill that should be amended. Now, with, what it therefore means is that 30 days has expired. What it means is there is an implied veto. There is an implied withholding of assets, and the National Assembly has its own role to play by virtue of that section 58 of the Constitution. They can repass the bill by to third majority. Mm. If the National Assembly decides, so it is their call, if they decide to pass the bill, repass the bill using to third majority of, the, of both houses, right, then that finance bill will become an act without the president's um, 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 assent. But where is the will? Are they ready to do that? So we'll keep looking and we'll keep hoping that maybe um, they will exercise this power of theirs but again, you know, Tolu, we are in election season. Who knows whether they um, the National Assembly or those around there are all looking at this. So they are really, really engrossed with campaign and all that for those who will be returning to the House. Well, it's a good way to live it. Uh, but as usual, we would always have a talk again around all of these issues. I've been speaking to Mr. Emmanuel Akpeme. He's a lawyer and he's also a manager. He is with Pricewaterhouse Coopers. He's a friend of the house. Thank you so much for your time on the show. Thank we really do me. appreciate this. Thank you so much. Dude. All right, then. Yeah.